This is episode two of a commercial grade product visualization tutorial series. In this episode, we're going to add a cable to the microphone, which we created in episode one. If you're following along with this tutorial, then make sure to join my discord and share your progress there. In the previous episode, I showed you how we set up these reference images. And now we just have to look at the bottom part of this microphone where the cable is connected. This shape might look very complicated to you right now, but don't worry, it's a lot simpler than you probably think it is. We are going to start by making this conical shape at the back of the cable. This might be the hardest part of this episode, and everything else is going to depend on this to some degree. In object mode, I'm going to use my box select tool to select the entire microphone which we made in the previous episode, and make sure to do this in wireframe mode, so you don't accidentally leave something behind which you might not be able to see from this perspective. We're going to press G to move this, then Y to only move along the Y axis. I'll hold down control to move it meter by meter. That way I'll know exactly how to bring it back. Now with shift A, I'm going to add a new circle. And in this add circle menu, we're going to set the number of vertices here to 16. The reason that we're using 16 vertices is because it's a multiple of four. And that's very important because if you look at this cone right here, there are four of these spikes which are pointed towards the end here. And 16 vertices is just enough geometry for us to create this. Now I'll go to edit mode, press E to extrude, then right click to snap this extrusion back into place, G to move, Z to follow the Z axis, and then hold down control to snap this by let's say 2 meters in this case. Now I'm going to press control R to initiate a new loop cut, and then I'll scroll up a couple of times until I have 4 loop cuts, I'll click once, and then I'll right click to confirm this action and keep this at its original location. Now we have to do something to this shape to create this kind of wave pattern. To do that we're going to focus on these inner 3 segments on the inside of the cylinder, and on this inner band we're going to select a vertex up here and another vertex down here which is located on this next vertical edge loop then we're going to press j to join these and as you can see blender creates an edge loop directly between these two vertices then we're going to move one vertex further select this vertex and this vertex up here press j again and now we went back up then move to the next vertex select this one and the next one down here at the bottom join them with j and we're going to do this a few more times until we get all the way back to the beginning of the cylinder once we get back to the beginning we climb back back up here and now you should have four of these spikes which are evenly distributed. Now with alt right click we're going to select one of these diagonal edges and with shift alt right click we're going to select the next one and we're going to also select all the other diagonal edges and once we have them all selected we're going to switch from edge select mode to vertex select mode. Once we move to vertex mode the edges which connect two vertices which are selected are also going to become selected. So now we can just go back to edge select mode and with control E we're going to mark a seam. The reason we're marking a seam is because this makes it very easy to select separate areas of this cylinder. If we switch to face select mode we can hover over this part over here and we can use L to select only the top part or we can also only select the bottom part if we want to. This makes it very easy to select those and perform changes only on those specific parts of the mesh. But for now we're going to select one of the edges which is red and with shift G we're going to select similar, click on seam and that's going to select all the other edges which have been marked as seams. Now with control B we're going to create a new bevel and that bevel is going to be approximately this wide and once we create the bevel we're going to go to the bevel menu down here and uncheck loop slide. This is going to give this a more even width. Now go back to face select mode. With L we're going to select this upper area and then we're going to press alt S to deflate this a little bit and move it inwards like this. As you can see, now we have a low poly version of this shape, which you can see right here. Now we're going to start making this a little bit smoother. To make this look better, we're going to go to the modifier properties menu, add a new modifier, go to generate and click on subdivision surface. You can also do this by just selecting the object and pressing control two or control three to add two or three levels of subdivision. Once we do this, you're going to notice that these edges are now a lot more smooth than they were before. Select one of the red edges, press shift G, select similar seam, and now we're going to press N, go to the item menu up here and at the bottom of this menu you're going to find mean crease click on that and set that to one then click away now these edges became a lot more sharp but setting mean creases is usually not the final solution it's only a temporary solution which we're going to replace later with bevels the reason for this is not exactly beginner friendly and we can talk about this in another video so if you want me to talk about that then let me know in the comments below and until then we have to turn this into a cone so deselect everything in vertex select mode we're going to use alt right click to select this vertex loop at the top 
And now we're going to use something called proportional editing. You can activate proportional editing with this tool up here. And this tool is very simple. When you select a piece of geometry and you perform any sort of transformation on it, such as moving it, the geometry nearby is also going to be affected by this transformation or by this operation. This also works for scaling and rotation. And if you scroll down, the area of influence is going to be increased. And if you scroll up, the area of influence is going to be decreased. Now, normally when you move a vertex while you have proportional editing active, it's going to create a smooth bump as you can see right here. But we can change the shape that this creates by going up here to this little menu. And instead of smooth, we're going to activate linear fall off. Now when we move a vertex, it creates a cone around it as you can see right here. We're going to leverage this to turn this into a cone. So we're going to select this edge loop at the top right here. We're going to press S to scale. As you can see now, this is moving the vertices around it, but it's not moving all the vertices so we don't get a conical shape. We're going to scroll down to increase the area of influence. And as you can see, now this starts to look like a circle. Now the problem is that when we scale this down, some of the geometry also gets pulled up. And this is natural because we're scaling everything towards this point. And that's why this geometry is also going towards that point. Now we don't want that. We only want this geometry to collapse inwards, but we don't want it to move up or down. Here's how you do that. This might seem a little bit complicated, but if you understand how this works, your IQ score is going to increase by approximately 15%. We're going to press S to initiate the scaling operation. And now you can choose an action axis along which you want to perform the scaling operation. To do that, you just have to press X, Y, or Z. And if you don't choose any axis, then it's just going to scale on all the axes simultaneously. Now we can also perform the scaling operation on two axes at the same time. To do that, we're going to press S to scale and then shift Z at the same time to exclude the Z axis from the scaling. So that way we're only scaling on the X and the Y axis, but not on the Z axis. In other words, we're scaling on two axes simultaneously. So we're going to scale this down until we get approximately the right shape and it's supposed to be something like this and if you went too far you can always undo this and try again but I wouldn't recommend trying to scale this up afterwards because then it's gonna start looking like a barrel something like this should do if you want to make this wider you're better off selecting everything then pressing S to scale shift Z to exclude the Z axis and now you can scale everything simultaneously and that's also going to change your shape now we got this little segment taken care of let's move on to the next part of this jack which is a very common thing that you're going to find on cables so that might be even more useful for you than what you just saw. I'm going to disable proportional editing by pressing this button right here. And by the way, the shortcut for proportional editing is O. You can check the shortcut for pretty much any operation that you can find in Blender by just hovering your mouse over that button. And after a second, it's going to show you what the shortcut for that is, if there is one. With Shift S, we're now going to snap the 3D cursor to the world origin, or I should say we have to snap the 3D cursor to the middle of this circle at the bottom here. And now with the pivot point set to 3D cursor, we're going to go to edit mode, select everything, press R to rotate x to only rotate around the x-axis and type in 180 to rotate by 180 degrees and hit enter now we're going to select this top edge loop right here and with p we're going to separate this by selection into a new object now go to object mode select only that circle at the top as you can see, we have a duplicate and we created a new circle, which is exactly the same as the circle at the top of this hole here. So select that circle, press tab to enter edit mode, extrude, right click, and then lift it up on the Z axis. And that has to be approximately this wide. Now with control R, we're gonna create a new loop cut, press two because I want two loop cuts, left click, right click. And now we can use this geometry to create these cuts that we have right here. Now to keep our topology clean, this might not be the best idea because these faces are a lot wider than they are high. And to do this properly, we want to have faces which are all square shaped. Now we can't just add vertical loop cuts because that's going to change the shape of our circle. It's not going to be perfectly round anymore. So we're going to undo a couple of steps. Let's lift this up a little bit more and we want to lift this high enough so that when we add a loop cut like this, this is going to be almost a perfect square. It doesn't have to be exact, but the closer the better. Now we're going to set the subdivision level to two and while hovering over this with our mouse, we're going to press control A to apply this. Now we have a nice grid pattern here which we can use to create these lines. Before we we do that we have to choose three segments where we're going to create this for each line we need to have two face segments like this so this is going to be one line this is going to be another line and then this is going to be the third line clarify this a little bit more we're going to select this edge loop this edge loop and
and also these two in the middle. Make sure that they're exactly evenly distributed. And with Control E, we're going to mark seams just so we can see which area belongs to which line. Now, for the sake of clarity, we also want to make sure that we know exactly where the middle is. And this is going to help us know exactly where we have to create these lines. So in edge select mode, we're going to use Alt right click to select a vertical edge loop, which is perfectly aligned with this axis right here. And with Shift Alt right click, we're going to select the same thing on the other side over here. Now we're going to press Control plus once or twice. We can always use Control minus to retract this. And now this is going to be this gap between these lines that you can see right here. We can also mark that as seams for now, just so we know where not to create these lines. And now in face select mode, we can press L to select this area and also this area, or rather these two areas on the outside. So let's deselect that, then select this, 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 and this. Now with I, we're going to inset these surfaces until they're approximately this wide. And it's a good idea to zoom in on this and make sure that when you're insetting, these faces here remain as squares. Right now, they're not squares, they're rather rectangular. They have a little bit more length and height. We can change that by switching to individual origins right here. And now we can individually change the size of these on the Z axis. So we're going to press S to scale, Z to scale on the Z axis, and scale this up a little bit until these turn into squares. Once we got that out of the way, we have to make this a little bit more round. Now you can try sliding this down with double G and then sliding it back here with double G, but you're not going to get it right. It's not going to be consistent and it's probably not going to look very good. So here's the right way to do this. I'm going to undo a couple of steps to get this back. I'm going to set the pivot point to 3D cursor, then select this vertex in the middle of this intersection right here. Shift S, cursor to selected. And we're going to select these two vertices on the corners. And now we can just scale those down to move them towards this point. And this is going to help us keep everything even. Now we also have to remember exactly how far we scale this inwards. To do that, we're going to use a number. For example, if we press S to scale, and then we type in 0 0.5, you can also just type 0 0.5. They're going to move to exactly the halfway point between their original location and the 3D cursor, which is going to turn this into a straight line. Now, I can't remember the exact ratio that we have to use here, but it's going to be something like 0.7, maybe 0.71. As you can see, that gets us pretty damn close to a circle. You can always undo this and try a different number. Just make sure that you remember the number that you used. In this case, I used 0.72. Then we're going to move down here, Shift S cursor to select and select these two, S 0.72. And now we have the same thing over here. We're going to quickly do the same thing on all these other parts and make sure you also do the same thing on the other side. Once you've done that, we're going to select these edges on the inside here, also on the other side, then control E, clear seam. I no longer want this to be red. Now I'm going to select this edge loop right here and also on the other side with shift alt right click, control E, mark seam. This is going to be the middle point for this inner cut right here. Select this, shift alt right click here, and then we're going to hit control plus a couple of times. As you can see, this line is a lot shorter than the other two lines. In fact, it appears that this line covers less than a quarter of the full circle. So we're going to expand this quite a bit until we get something that looks like this. Now, I don't want to mark all of this as seams because I don't want to have to deselect this later. So we're going to go up here to select, select loops, select the boundary loop. And while we're at it, let's also use the brush select tool to deselect this part, this part right here, this part right here, and also this part over here. Make sure to do the same thing on the underside. And I only want to keep these little lines which connect this. And if you don't remember from the last episode, you can get the brush select tool by pressing C and by clicking and dragging the middle mouse button, you can deselect stuff. And of course, you can select it by just clicking and dragging the left mouse button. Control E, mark seams. Now in face select mode, we're going to use L to select this. And also on the other side, press I to inset, but this one has to be a little bit thicker. And then once again, we're going to place the 3D cursor right here. Take this S.72, same thing over here on the other side. And one more time on this section back here. If any of this was too fast for you, just roll back the video and watch it again. And if you still don't get it, let me know in the comments or ask me on Discord or ask anybody else in the Discord, they're going to be able to help you. Now make sure that you're in face select mode. Select all of these areas which we designated for creating these lines. Remember that we cut this in half, so you might have to select this area twice. And once we got all these lines selected like this, we're going to press Alt E and click on extrude faces along normals. Now each face is going to follow the direction which is facing perfectly. And you can just use your mouse to move this inwards a little bit like this. Now we're going to select a face in the corner of this fat line, Control Shift and select opposite face over here. Then do the same thing over here on the other side. Press I to inset. Then in edge select mode, we're only going to select this loop around here and shift alt right click to select this loop in the other one. Now press X, dissolve edges. And now this hole has a slightly different shape. In face select mode, use alt right click and shift alt right click to select these loops, which go all the way around the holes. Make sure to select all of them. Now go to select, select loops and click on select boundary loop. Now only the borders of these areas, which we previously had selected are going to remain selected. With Control B, we're going to bevel these edges, scroll up or scroll
scroll down until you turn this edge loop into three edge loops. And just to be sure, make sure that you have two segments down here in the bevel menu and set the shape to one. This is going to act as supporting geometry for the subdivision surface modifier. And again, if you don't know what this means, make sure you watch the previous episode. All of this is going to make a lot more sense. Now we're going to add a subdivision surface modifier with control two. And as you can see, that looks absolutely beautiful. Now you might notice that the shading looks a little bit different on this object and this one down here. This is probably because we have inverted normals. If you don't know what that means, we're not going to go too deep on explaining that in this video. I already made some videos about this before, and I also talked about this in depth in my ebook, so go check that out. A lot of the things that you see me do in this video are going to make a lot more sense to you. To fix this problem, we're going to go up here to the viewport overlays menu, and we're going to check this box called face orientation. As you can see, some surfaces are blue, some surfaces are red. The red surface means we got a problem. So select the object which has a red surface, press tab to enter edit mode, select all the geometry, and press shift N to correct the normals. Sometimes this might not immediately correct all the normals. You might have to select some faces separately and press shift N again. You might even have to check this inside box to get some more control. But now this problem is solved. So go back up here, uncheck face orientation, and now we're good. Now the rest of this cable is going to be pretty simple. We're going to take this edge loop right here and also shift alt right click to select this edge loop down here. Press E to extrude, right click to snap it back, shift S cursor to select it. So the cursor is exactly in the middle of this object. Now press S to scale and shift Z to exclude the Z axis from scaling. And we're just going to move this inwards a little bit. This is going to allow us to create this gap between these separate parts of the cable jack. Select this edge loop and this one down here, control B to bevel this. And again, you want to make sure that you have two segments and a shape value of one. We're also going to take this part from the top of this bottom part of the cable, extrude, right click, S to scale, shift Z to exclude the Z axis, pull this inwards a little bit, select this and bevel it with control B. Now we have a nice little gap here and we can just take this edge loop from up here, P to separate it to new object and also copy it. And now we're going to use that to create the last part of this jack. Now I'm having a debate with myself about whether we have to create all the details at the end of this cable because they're not going to be visible once we plug this in anyway. So I think we should just create a simple version of this so I show you how to do it. But we just need this to look good once we connect it. We don't have to waste time on anything else. Take this edge loop which we just created and now we're using the median point as the pivot point again. So extrude, right click, scale this down a little bit like this. Then take this outer edge loop, extrude, right click, lift it up. We need to bring it approximately this far, maybe even a little bit further because because this section is going to contain these three rings and that needs to be a little bit wider than this section down here. So it's going to be something like this. Now give me a loop cut right here in the middle and another loop cut on this section right here above that. Now add another loop cut down here, but don't confirm it yet. Slide it all the way to the top and do the same thing over here and slide that up to this one. Now in face select mode, we're going to use alt right click to select this face at the top. Press S to scale and shift Z to exclude the Z axis. And we're going to scale this down by 0.98 and that's going to give us this little step here. Now press control plus two times, then once again S to scale, shift Z and type in 0.98 to get another step over here. Now this has a slightly different shape. So let's also add another loop cut right here. Select the edge loop at the top, control plus until we select all the steps, but nothing below the last step. Then just S to scale, shift Z and scale this down a little bit like this. We can also pull this up a little bit further. Now when we add a subdivision service modifier, we're going to get a different shape here. Select an edge loop on the outside of one of the steps and shift alt right click to select an edge loop on the inside of one of the steps. Shift G, select similar face angles. Now all the edges which have a similar angle are going to be selected and those are all the edges which we want to bevel to sharpen them. So control B, add a tiny bevel like this and now that looks a lot better. Now we forgot to make one more step up here. So let's just extrude this inwards and extrude this up and also bevel these two edge loops the same way we beveled the others. And now we have to create the next part of this jack which has this button up here. So we're going to lift this edge loop up to around here somewhere and this is where things get interesting interesting because we have to cut out a little curve out of here, which is like half of an ellipse. Now creating this is very simple and all the other Blender YouTubers are going to show you how to do this with a Boolean modifier or some bullshit. I'm going to show you how to do this properly with good topology and you can only learn this type of shit if you're watching Thomas Cole in 3D. So make sure you subscribe to his channel if you want to learn something more about topology. This is what really makes a good 3D artist. Well, we have to lower this a little bit and it has to be around here somewhere. And with control R, we're going to place a loop cut 
cut right here in the middle. And now we just have to select a couple of faces like this. I'm going to select four faces on each side of the middle edge here. X, delete faces. And we already got a nice hole here. We just have to make it a little bit more round. Alt right click to select this outer edge loop here and G, Z to move it up. It has to be around here somewhere. Now select these vertices down here, lift them up a little bit, then add these to the selection and lift it up a little bit further. And before you know it, you got a nice round shape here. And this is exactly what we need for this button. And now let's create the inside of this hole so this is a solid shape. To do that, we're first going to select an edge loop from the bottom of the cylinder. You don't want to select something out here which is wider than the cylinder. You can just take this one from the corner of the bevel down here, shift the right click, lift this up on the z-axis, then snap the 3D cursor to one of the vertices over here on the top of the cylinder, select this, set the pivot point to 3D cursor, and scale this down to zero on the z-axis. Shift S, cursor to selected, scale this down a little bit further, and while the 3D cursor is still here, and the pivot point is set to 3D cursor, we're going to use Alt right click to select this edge loop and Shift Alt right click to add this one to the selection. Extrude, right click, S to scale and Shift Z to exclude the Z axis from the scaling. That's going to move everything inwards and it's going to prevent us from getting a weird shape down here like this. It's going to move inwards perfectly and we're going to be able to connect everything with this circle which is going to allow us to get a nice clean filling over here. Now select this edge loop and deselect this lower part then with Shift Alt right click add this inner circle to the selection. Give me the brush select tool with C and with middle click we're going to deselect all the edges on this part of the circle which don't have a direct match on this outer circle. Now go W bridge edge loops. Some of you might not be able to find bridge edge loops with W. You can also find it up here in edge bridge edge loops and then these edges are going to connect perfectly. Now select this first vertex down here in the hole. Shift S cursor to select it. Then select all these vertices on this part of the circle which doesn't have any edges to connect to and also an extra vertex over here on the sides. Extrude right click scale to zero on the Z axis and now this is going to connect here perfectly. We just have to select all this as well and merge by distance to connect these vertices. Next, place the cursor on the next vertex down here with Shift S. Then select the next set of edges on the inside here, but not the outermost edge. And again, scale to zero on the Z axis. Place the 3D cursor on the next vertex. Select this edge loop again without the outer edges. Scale to zero on the Z axis. And do this one more time with these vertices down here. And finally, the last vertex over here in the middle. Now select the edge loop around this gap here with Alt right click. And with Shift, you're going to deselect this edge on this side and this side. It might be easier to use a tiny brush select tool to deselect this so you don't accidentally select something in the background. When you're using brush select and middle click, you're making sure that you're definitely only deselected and you can't select anything on accident. Now go W, bridge edge loops, select everything, shift N to correct the normals. And once again, we're going to press M, merge by distance to make sure that everything's connected. Now take this edge loop, extrude, right click, scale down a little bit like this. And we can use this edge loop to extrude the next part of this cable, which is the very end of this. I've got another picture here showing this part of the cable. We're not going to worry about any of these buttons or anything else. With Alt right click, we're going to select all these edges around the top here. Also the edges out here on the outside of this hole and the edges at the bottom of this hole on the inside. Now with Control B, we're going to bevel all of this. That's going to make this tighter under the influence of a subdivision surface modifier. Make sure you got two segments, shape one, and set the outer miter to arc. Here's the difference between using sharp and using arc. You can see that right here. This is once again a topology thing. This just allows us to join this with J and that's going to give us quads only over here, which is just good practice. We're also going to select this edge loop over here, control B to bevel it. And now we got a perfect cutout right here. Now we just have to make this button right here. And to do that, we're going to select the surface at the bottom of this hole, which we just cut out, but we don't want to select anything on this edge loop on the outside of this bottom surface. So we're going to select this face and control shift right click on this face over here. Now everything is selected except this edge loop right here. With Shift D, we're going to duplicate that. Right click to snap it back into place. P to separate this to a new object by selection. Object mode, select this object alone. Edit mode, select everything and use Alt S to inflate this to push it outwards like this. Now with Shift Alt right click, we're going to deselect these faces on the sides and then we're going to use Alt S to inflate this even further and that's going to give us this curved shape. Now once again, we're going to deselect the outermost faces of this selection, inflate them a little bit more with Alt S and you can do that a couple more times is just to get the right shape here if you want to but i think this looks pretty good already now we should have duplicated this surface before we inflated it outwards so now we got to go back in here select the same surface again shift d right click p and separate it again so we get the same surface again now select this surface and shift select this surface because currently they're separate objects so we can't connect them but if we press ctrl j then these two are going to 
merge into the same object. And now we can select the edges on the outside of both surfaces like this with Alt right click. And then with W we can bridge edge loops. Or we can also do that up here in edge, bridge edge loops. Now this is a solid button. I'm just going to tighten this up by insetting this surface which remains selected after we bridge the edge loops. And after I inset this with the same width that I have on the bevel right here, I'm going to check edge rail and I'll uncheck even offset. That gives us a perfect shape here. In object mode, we're now going to go object, shade smooth, and we're good to go. Once we got the button taken care of, we're going to take this edge loop at the top, extrude, right click, scale it inwards approximately this far. In fact, we should probably use a factor to scale this very accurately. We're going to scale it to something like 0.5. And now let me show you how to create these circular holes here. With control R, we're going to add a bunch of loop cuts around this surface at the top. And we want enough loop cuts so that we have perfect squares here. Now let's go to top view with seven. And we're going to create a circular hole using this geometry right here. Notice how when I select a surface, I'm trying to select a surface which is equally wide as it is long. Now again, it's impossible to get this exactly right because this part over here is a lot narrower than this part down here. But if this wasn't stretched out by the circular shape, this would pretty much be a square. Additionally, we got six faces down here and six faces over here, so we're good. Now before we do anything with the selection, go up here to edit, preferences, and in the add-on section, look for loop tools, check this box right here, and this is just gonna give us some more tools which we can use to perform all kinds of modeling operations. It's one of the most useful things for working with topology. You're going to go extrude, right click, scale this down with S. And when you press N, you're going to toggle this menu on the side here in edit mode. Go down here to edit, open up loop tools and click on circle right here. As you can see, this turns all selected geometry into a perfect circle. And we can still scale this up or down a little bit if we want to make this bigger or smaller. But don't take it too far because you don't want to have no twisted faces like this. This geometry looks very healthy right now. Your circle might be a little bit twisted like this. To fix Fix that just rotate it until the geometry looks like it connects pretty well this circle is pretty damn perfect so we're going to extrude that downwards now add a loop cut in the middle and bring it down almost to the bottom but not all the way to the bottom and select this edge loop over here Control b to bevel it that's just gonna make this edge here a little bit tighter now this is one hole we can just copy this two times to get the other two holes so we need one hole over here and another hole over here on this side so on this side this is the exact middle we need to select three faces up here so select this one and then three faces down here on the other side once again we got a six by six selection press x to delete faces place the 3d cursor exactly to the world origin with shift s but if your object is not exactly on the world origin then just use an outer circle from somewhere around here and snap your cursor to that because that's going to be the exact middle of this circle now to make this easier you can use alt right click to select these edges around this hole this is the six by six surface that we had initially and we're going to copy that and bring it right here Control e mark seam and in face select mode that makes it very easy to insert select this use the 3d cursor as the pivot point up here now press shift d right click r to rotate z to only rotate around the z-axis and as you can see now we just have to rotate this and it's going to fit right here like a puzzle we're going to rotate it by exactly 90 degrees now select everything with a m merge by distance and now everything is connected we're going to do the same thing one more time over on this side x delete faces l to select this shift d right click r to rotate 90 degrees sometimes you might have to use minus 90 degrees this time it's different because we're in top view. I don't know why. But anyway, we can just select everything. M, merge by distance. And now we got three holes right here. Select this circle. Go up here to face, grid fill. We're going to increase the number to 16 to make this look a little bit better. And we can adjust the offset to align this with the holes better. You don't have to do this. I'm just doing this to flex. It looks a little bit better, but it really doesn't matter. Now it looks like we might have to bring these holes a little bit further inwards. Because right now they look like they got a disability. So with our box select tool, we're going to select everything like this. And with shift alt right click we're going to deselect this outer edge loop and scale everything down with s shift z we're going to bring that inwards a little bit now we got to bevel everything again we're also going to select everything and lift it up on the z axis a little bit further and now we got the jack right here in object mode we're going to select all the objects which belong to this jack deselect the object at the top and then select it one more time now this is the last object which is selected which makes it what's called an active object and with control p we're going to parent everything while keeping the transform now when we select this object and we move it, everything else is going to follow. Now we have to connect this to the bottom of the microphone, which means we have to snap it there with the 3D cursor. So we're first going to have to place the 3D cursor to the middle of this hole with Shift S, and then we can select this. But if we snap this there with Shift S selection the cursor, it's only going to connect with the middle. So here's a better way to do this. In edit mode, we're going to select this edge loop at the top of the jack, Shift S, cursor to select it. Now go back to object mode, go up here to the object menu, go to set origin, origin 
origin to 3D cursor. And now when we select this and place the 3D cursor on this edge loop with shift S, we can snap the selection to the 3D cursor. And now this part is going to connect with the microphone. We just have to scale this down until it gets the right size. And now we can push that in there and it's going to fit perfectly. Finally, we just got to make the cable. This is really easy. Let me show you how to do this. Select this lower object, go to edit mode, alt right click to select this lower edge loop. And with full stop on the number pad, we're going to focus our view on this. Now extrude, right click, scale this inwards like this. This is going to be the hole for the cable. We can also fill this and extrude it inwards further. Add these edges to the selection and also these. Control B to bevel everything. Make sure the bevel got a shape of one and two segments. And this is where we're going to attach the cable. Here's how you make the cable. With alt right click, we're going to select this edge loop, shift S cursor to select it. Now go to object mode, create a new object. We go to mesh cube. With shift A, we're going to create a new cube. Now go to edit mode, press X, collapse edges and faces. And now this entire cube is going to turn into a single vertex. Now just extrude this, right click, lower it down on the Z axis like this, extrude it one more time and lower it down further. And now you can extrude this somewhere else, or you can control left click anywhere to make this vertex extrude and follow your mouse. Now go to object mode and with control two or three, you can add a subdivision surface modifier to this. And once you got a shape that you're happy with, select this line, go up here to object, down here, move to convert and convert this into a curve. Now this makes it look blocky. So we're going to have to undo this. And before we turn this into a curve, we're going to apply the subdivision surface modifier. Now we can go to object, convert, curve. And over here in the curve properties, which is this green little line menu over here, we can make this a little bit thicker. So find a section called geometry here, open that up, then find the bevel section of that section. Make sure that this is on round and you're going to increase the depth value to add some thickness to this cable. You can make this as thick as you like, but we're going to make this match the hole which we just created a minute ago. In this case, the depth has to be something like 0.095 or maybe we can just do 0.1. That seems to fit pretty well. And if you want to make this cable smooth, you can increase the resolution value over here to add more segments. I'm going to set mine to something like 16. And then you can just go object, shade smooth, select this in object mode, shift select this, control P, parent object, but keep the transform. And now you got a cable connected to your microphone, which just about wraps up this episode. In the next episode, we're going to model the stand for this microphone that you can see right here. And that's going to be the final modeling episode of the series before we move to texturing and animating. So make sure you subscribe to the channel join our discord community the link is in the description and follow me on instagram because i'm about to give you guys some announcements which you will not believe we're going to do something that nobody has ever done before in the sphere of 3d modeling online i also answer a lot of questions on instagram so unless you want to ask me or tell me some dumb shit i'm most likely going to be able to reply to you there also check out my blender ebook if you need a more in-depth or a more slowed down guide which is going to help you understand the techniques that you saw me use in this video let me know if you got any questions and I'll see you in the next one.